I'm Brant Ainsworth from Franklinville, New York, and these are my horses Jill, a 19-year-old Percheron mare, and Doc, an 18-year-old Percheron stallion. Today we're going to talk a little bit about driving horses, the lines, the bits, where to put your lines, your hands on the lines when you're driving the team, and voice control, and just about having better control of a team. Some of the things you can expect from a well-driven team are soft mouths, accurate driving, a team that pulls good, starts and stops good, and can back up a load. All that is controlled mainly by your driving skills and your hands on the line and your voice. You might have seen a team that was acting real poor and they wouldn't behave, they wouldn't back up, wouldn't stop, just didn't do anything right, and then another guy takes a hold of the same team, doesn't change anything, and he gets along really well with them. Well, it was probably the difference in Teamsters and the way he drives. We're going to try to help improve your skills and make you become that Teamster who can control the teams other people can't. We have the four basic types of lines you'll see people driving with. The old-fashioned, most common leather. Uh, biothane would be my second choice. And then you've got bio and you've got nylon. There's pros and cons to each one. Bio is, looks good. You can just wash it with a high-pressure washer. It's relatively strong, but it will stretch. It won't break, but it will stretch. And especially if you've got a team that's really on the bit, and that's a bad feeling when you feel those lines stretching and you're kind of worried that your team might not get squared up good. Nylon's pretty good. Uh, nylon's strong, but it tends to fray where it goes through the hame ring on the horses. And uh, sometimes it's not quite as strong as leather. And uh, nylon can be really harsh on your hands. A lot of people like nylon cross lines, but the butt lines in their hand, they like biothane or leather. Biothane is a good product. It has a leather feel to it. You can hold on to the lines when they're wet. They're pretty strong. They will wear out a little bit after years of use. And the only real downfall to these, you can step on them with a toe cork on a pulling shoe and get them cut. The best is leather. Of course, it has a real leather feel. It's expensive, but they really feel good in your hand and they're big and strong. And well-made leather lines are going to last you a long time. There's a couple ways to fasten the lines to a horse. The first way is to go right through here with a buckle. You can have a couple different holes hooked in this buckle depending on how short or how long. You can adjust your cross lines by buckling this up shorter, such as this. And if you shorten your cross lines, that makes your team walk a little closer together. Or if you widen your cross lines, it makes the team walk a little farther apart. Buckles work real good. They don't come unhooked. The downfall to a buckle, it takes a little longer to harness a horse. The another alternative is a snap. Just quickly snap your line right on and you're ready to go. The problem with the snap, they can get snapped into other things or occasionally come unhooked. But if you like snaps and that's what you have on your lines and you're a little worried about that, you can just take a little electrical tape and wrap it right around the snap. And that snap's not going to get hooked into anything. The lines consist of the outside line. It's the straight piece, the long line that goes all the way back, and that goes to the outside of the horse's bit. From there, we have the inside line, or the cross line. This buckles off the outside line and goes to the middle of the horse's bit on the opposite horse. Each line has one of these. This would be the outside line, it would be the longer one, and the straight line and the line coming off that on the buckle would be the cross line. This gives us a good view of what the lines really look like. It's hard to get perspective of how the lines work when they're on the horse. When you're driving a team from behind, this is essentially how the lines would hook up to the team's bits. You got a picture of those jockeys as each side of the horse's bit. It's a little overdone because the jockeys are twice as wide as a bit would normally be, but it gives you the right idea. The straight line. The one without a buckle that goes all the way to the outside of the horse's bit, that's your outside line. The one with a buckle is your cross line, and that's the shorter line. The same on both sides. These are nylon lines that snap into biothane butt lines. The trouble with these butt lines with a snap, you can be driving a team and this snap can fool around and get snapped into a harness part. And then you're pulling on the horse's harness. You're pulling on the top of the spider or the britchin or something like that. And you've lost control because you're no longer pulling on the bit. 
Uh, these lines were designed also, they just loop around, one continuous piece. The trouble I have with that when I'm driving, this can get stuck on something, a fence post or something like that, and I'm stuck right there, and I can lose control of the team like that. And the other trouble I have with this particular set of lines, they're real light. And if a horse is on the bit very good, they're not going to last very long. Or if you've got a team that's really on the bit and you're trying to drive them, you could break these lines or these little slide snaps could break. Or you could lose your accuracy with where you have your cross line adjusted because these slide straps can just slide. Whereas a Conway buckle with an actual tongue coming through here will never do that. When you pull a horse, that's what you get and that's how the horse turns when you want to pull to the right. Turn to the left. That's what you get. If you loose line, that's what happens if you loose line that outside line. You let that horse wander wherever he wants. Same thing when you turn to the right. If you loose line, just let that horse wander. You only have control of one line. But if you give a good square turn, you're still pulling with both lines. Now what happens when you sit off to one side, or you walk off to one side like you would on a log or a buckeye pulling sled or anything like that, you come right over here, and once you square your team up, you've got that horse that's farthest away from you is a step behind. You gotta keep that in mind. You can compensate for that by using straps on each bit, on each side of the horse's bit that's behind to put that horse about four inches farther forward, would square that right up. Or you can just remind yourself not to get off to one side if you don't have to. Or you can use that to your advantage. Say I'm working a team and one horse isn't keeping up with the other horse. Well, I'm going to get off to that horse's side that's a little bit slow. That's going to give that horse a little advantage. It's going to pull the other one back and often that'll even your team right up. That works to the right and to the left. Right there is an example of off to the right. Here's an example of off to the left. And the farther you go, the more extreme it gets and the more it pulls that one horse back and the other one forward. 